Hello, I'm Steve Shaw, National Coordinator of Football Officials and Secretary of Rules Editor for the NCAA. And today we're presenting the first in our series of media videos from the 2021 season. And we're gonna focus on game action from week zero of our college season. But before we get into our videos, I'd like to take a couple moments to review a few of our rule changes and points of emphasis for this upcoming season. Now remember, it's the mission of the Rules Committee to develop, evaluate rule changes that will enhance the sport, protect the image of the game, and enhance the student athlete's health and safety. Player safety is the top priority of the Rules Committee. So let's look at some of these changes. Our first rule change we'll talk about is the permanent extension of the team area to the 20 yard lines. This allows coaches to reorganize their sideline and allow for social distancing, but it also puts the coach closer to the red zone where they can see the action better and they can more easily make substitutions in that area. Now, our second change is around extra periods or what most people call overtime. And this is a player safety initiative to limit the number of plays in these long overtime games that a player may have to play. So now beginning in the second extra period, if a team scores a touchdown, they must attempt a two point try. And if it goes to a third extra period, now their possession series will be a one play, two point try from the three yard line. Both teams will get the ball. If it's still tied after the third, we'll stay with this one play, two point try for all subsequent overtime periods. Another area that was addressed was feigning injuries. And we know that this is a bad look for our game and really is contrary to the spirit of the rules. And so now for questionable game action, an institution or a conference has the option to consult with the national coordinator of officials and we'd facilitate a video review. And if there are findings, those will go back to the director of athletics at the institution for further action from that point. And so this is something that we hope will curtail feigning injuries in the game. And then finally, now in order to keep the game moving, if replay overturns a call on the field, the game clock is only going to be adjusted if we're inside the last two minutes of the second quarter, inside the last five minutes of the fourth quarter. And again, this is to help the efficiency in replay and keep the game moving. As we look at our points of emphasis for the 2021 season, number one on the list is targeting and really our player safety rules. And player safety is a top priority for all officials. And our targeting rule in particular is a player safety rule. And it's changing player behavior in terms of the use of the helmet in a positive way. So this will continue to be a top priority. Now, second is unsportsmanlike conduct taunting opponents. And specifically for this year, any taunting action directed at an opponent or actions demeaning to the game will be penalized, no exceptions. These actions can lead to further escalation of incidents and they must be eliminated. And we're gonna to work to do that. Third is the uniforms. And the officials will get involved when a player is significantly out of scope with the uniform rule. Examples will be pants that are worn halfway up the thigh or t-shirts hanging way down in the back. So there's no yardage penalty for these, but a player must correct the uniform or leave the game. And then finally, sideline management and control as prescribed by the rules, if a coach comes out on the field to debate an officiating decision, it's an automatic unsportsmanlike conduct foul. And we, we allow the coaches to have their say, but they need to do it from the team area. So we're communicating this with all coaches. And if they leave the team area to debate an officiating decision, it's going to be an automatic unsportsmanlike conduct foul. So with that, let's get on into a few plays from our week zero. Our first play this week, we're snapping from inside the 10, and we get a completed pass out into the flat, and the receiver is going to head for the pylon. Now, our side judge is in great position. It's a very tight play. The side judge checks back with the line judge to make sure the runner was in bounds, and then goes up with a touchdown. Now, replay is obviously going to come in on this play, and it gives us an opportunity to talk about the pylon. Now, we're first going to get a low end zone view, and we can see that the right toe of the runner hits the pylon first. And we know that 
when a runner touches the pylon, the play is immediately dead at that spot. And now we get a great down-the-line view, and we're going to pause it when that toe touches the pylon. And remember, if the runner touches the pylon, if the ball is breaking the plane of the goal at that moment or goal line extended, meaning a continuation of the goal line plane outside of the boundary, if the ball is breaking either of these planes, it is a touchdown. But we're going to see here the ball is just short of the goal So replay is going to overturn this, spot the ball back in the field of play. So good job here. Play two is actually the opening kickoff in a game. And as the kick is in the air, we're going to see receiver number five. He's going to give a fair catch signal, and he's going to catch the ball right at the boundary. And then immediately, without hesitation, we're going to see our headline judge gets their marker out and throws the flag for a free kick out of bounds. Now, as we go back and take a look at the play, we get a couple of really good views, and we're going to see that the receiver's left foot is going to touch out of bounds, and then the right foot hits out of bounds before the receiver touches the kick. Now, by rule, if any ball not in player control, including this kickoff, touches a player out of bounds, the ball is considered out of bounds. So simply, we have a free kick out of bounds here, and... There are three options when you have a free kick out of bounds. The receiving team can make them re-kick five yards from the previous spot, or they can take the ball five yards from where the ball belongs to them, so where it would have gone out of bounds here. Or the most prevailing option we see is the receiving team can put the ball in play 30 yards beyond where team A kicked it off from. In a typical kickoff from the 35, that becomes the receiving team's 35-yard line. So good job by our official here, and good job handling the rule. Our third play, we're going to get a pass down the seam. It's going to be caught by the receiver, and then we get a big hit by number five of the defense, and we're going to get a flag from our back judge for targeting. Now, replay is going to take a look at this, and remember, we must confirm all aspects of the targeting foul or we must overturn this. There are no stands in targeting. And so the components that we have to confirm here are, do we have a defenseless player? Is there an indicator of targeting? And is there forcible contact to the head or neck area of the defenseless player? So we're gonna see from the low end zone, the receiver makes the catch. He may get a couple of steps down, but is still considered defenseless as he hasn't fully transitioned to a runner. So we've confirmed that. Then the defender comes in, he leads with his head, lowers his head, gives a slight launch, but clearly an upward thrust. So we have a clear indicator of targeting. And then, no question, there's forcible contact to the head or neck area of the defenseless receiver. So this is enough to confirm targeting and a correct call by our back judge. Our last play this week, we have a punting situation, and we're going to get a big kick here, and it's going to be caught by the receiver at the 16. The receiver retreats and is ultimately down back at the 16 where he caught the ball. Now, as we're exchanging teams, replay is going to stop the game to review the action of the punter. We get a couple of really good looks, and we're going to see that the punter has his knee down on the ground with firm control of the ball. In the second view, we see the knee down with the ball at the 15. So replay is going to overturn this, mark the ball back at the 15, and turn it over to the defense at that point. Now, one point of note, we do have one exception to the knee down rule, and that's when we have a holder with their knee down with a kicker in place at the snap. In this situation, the ball remains alive. Well, that's it for our Week Zero Plays, and we appreciate your time invested in watching this video. Best of luck to all as we head into a very, very busy Week One of college football. It's great to finally have our season back in full swing.